In today's video, we're going to continue our discussion of cellular respiration. This will be part two of our video. This is for the IB exam starting in 2016 for section 2.8 and 8.2. And in this video, we're going to look specifically at two parts of aerobic cellular respiration. That is the link reaction and uh, the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle. And in looking at all of the parts or the components of aerobic cellular respiration as a whole, we've previously talked about glycolysis, and that's the conversion of glucose into a little bit of a ATP, and more specifically, um, pyruvate or pyruvic acid. And so the second step that we're going to look at today is the conversion of that pyruvate into um, and during the link reaction, and then in the Krebs cycle. And the purpose of the Krebs cycle, as we'll see, is really to produce a large amount of these two high energy uh, molecules called NADH and FADH2, which we will see how that's actually produced in this portion of the video. And our part three will look at the electron transport chain, and that is the production of really the majority of the ATP, all of the ATP being produced. So let's take a look at the link reaction in more specific detail. This process is the oxidation of pyruvate. Um, and this occurs within the matrix of the mitochondria. So the pyruvate was produced in the cytoplasm of the cell. Well, now it's actually being moved into the mitochondria. An enzyme, specifically coenzyme A, is used in this process. And it first remove, removes the pyruvate's carboxyl group as a CO2. And so this is the production or one of the steps in which CO2 is released. And it removes electrons, hydrogen ions specifically, and transfers them to NAD plus to form NADH. And that NADH will be used in the electron transport chain, as we'll see in part three of our videos. It then attaches to a molecule to create something called acetyl-CoA. And acetyl-CoA is what enters the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle. That's the product that, that is needed by the Krebs cycle. And so in this image, we're, we can see all of this put together. So pyruvate from glycolysis plus this coenzyme A plus NAD plus um, is produced or turns into acetyl-CoA and CO2. And the CO2 is the, the waste product. And this NAD plus gets reduced, so it becomes NADH. And the NADH goes to oxidative phosphorylation, which is something that we'll see happen in the electron transfer chain. Um, and then the acetyl-CoA goes to the Krebs cycle. And so let's take a closer look at the Krebs cycle. It is quite the multi-step reaction here. There's lots of different things occurring, um, lots of different enzymes being used. Again, another example of a metabolic reaction. And this diagram uh, obviously makes it look very confusing. And there's a lot of steps and things going on, but we, we can simplify it a little bit. Um, and so what is occurring in this process is by starting with this acetyl-CoA molecule, um, it is being manipulated in order to produce NAD. So during their link reaction, the pyruvate is converted um, and, and created into this acetyl-CoA that starts the Krebs cycle. And during that process, a CO2 molecule is released. So that pyruvate, remember from glycolysis, was a three-carbon molecule. And when the CO2 is released, it begins as a two-carbon molecule. And to start the Krebs cycle, that is going to be uh, joined to or combined to a four-carbon molecule um, in order to be able to create citrate. And that four-carbon molecule that combines with acetyl-CoA is called oxalacetate. And so the citrate is produced and it actually is converted into an isomer of citrate called isocitrate. This isocitrate gets oxidized and reduces NAD plus to form NADH and H plus. At this point, it also loses a carbon dioxide. So at this point, our molecule goes from having six carbons, this isocitrate, to having five carbons. So we've released a single CO2 molecule and have produced an NADH and H plus. This process occurs for a second time in which a second NAD plus uh, is reduced to NADH and H+, and a second CO2 molecule is also released. And so what that does is it leaves us with a four-carbon molecule. The CoA enzyme uh, is released, and it gets recycled and reused back in the link reaction. And so we're la left with succinate, which is a four-carbon molecule uh, that is going to continue on in this process. And so this four-carbon succinate molecule is going to go through a few more steps and eventually uh, re become oxalacetate. And that occurs by, one, producing an ATP molecule, so a phosphate 
is added to ADP to produce a single ATP molecule. Um, an NADH and H plus is also going to be produced, and an FADH2 uh, molecule and H plus is also going to be produced. So there's these NADH plus molecules uh, and FADH2 molecules that are being produced, and those are what are going to be used in the electron transfer chain. And those are the important molecules that are being produced. Again, there's very little ATP being produced. Um, and so this is not where we're seeing a lot the, the majority of that ATP being produced. To kind of help walk through this, here's a step-by-step -step of what's happening, a very summarized version of what's happening in the Krebs cycle. Um, again, ending with that oxal acetate to be recycled through the cycle again. Go ahead and pause the video if you'd like to write this down. And looking at the Krebs cycle as a whole and as a summary, we can see that carbon dioxide is removed in two reactions, so two carbon dioxides are released. And that makes sense because we start with a six carbon molecule and then with uh, oxal acetate, which is a four carbon molecule. Hydrogen is removed in four reactions. NAD plus accepts three of those um, hydrogen ions to make three NADH. FADH uh, accepts one hydrogen to make one FADH2. And ATP, a single ATP, is, is produced in one reaction. So here's a more simplified image as well as the Krebs cycle. We can see here how many carbons are occurring and the different steps to all of this um, where GDP is represent, representing ATP. Uh, we can see the production of an FADH2 and one, two, three NADH plus molecules and one, two CO2 molecules. The NADH and the FADH2 molecules are going to be used in the electron transfer chain, and this is, will be the topic of our next video. Essentially, for now, what you should focus on is that those NADH and FADH2 molecules are really important in order for the transfer chain to be able to occur, and the electron transfer chain occurs um, between the matrix, inner membrane, and inner membrane space of the mitochondria. And we'll look at this and take a closer look at the structure of mitochondria and this actual process in our next and final video for respiration.